Hello, welcome. This is the Standing Committee on Health and Social Development. Um, my name is Gordon McNeely, I'm the chair of the committee, and uh, with us here today is uh, Michelle Beaton, Carla Bernard, Rob Henderson, uh, Sydney McEwen, and Zach Bell. So I'd like to welcome everybody back. Um, and then first thing I would like to do is uh, just get, can I get a motion to adopt the agenda? Uh, Michelle Beaton. Um, so we're here uh, in an emergency meeting, or that was so it was called, and uh, uh, well, uh, to discuss uh, the, the work plan and a letter that came in um, from Michelle Beaton and, uh, and the Honorable uh, Peter Bevan Baker. So um, it's on the agenda and I just, we just need to come in to talk about it in camera, uh, or not in camera, sorry, just in, uh, in committee to, uh, to figure out next steps and how to action this and how we'd like to proceed as a committee. So. Um, at this time, I'll open the floor up to uh, discussion of this uh, of the letter, and uh, we can see where, where it goes. Yeah. So, anybody want to start, or do you want to uh, do? Would you like? Is there? Does anybody want to talk about the letter, or was it okay to just send, or how would you like to proceed? I guess. Rob? Well, I guess my, from my perspective, I also sent an email in response to the letter to the committee. Uh, thought that might be included here, but anyway, if it's not, that's fine. Uh, anyway, uh, I certainly would see that there's uh, been certainly statements that the minister has made that have uh, sort of raised eyebrows because it's contrary to things that he has said previously and uh, things, you know, even from the medical homes not having the desired effect. Like I believe that was on a CBC interview. Uh, so, uh, you know, I certainly feel that there's a worthiness of the conversation of why this is an important issue and uh, why, as I think as a legislative committee, we need to get uh, some clarity and some sense of what the plan is here. So. Sure. And we did get your correspondence too, um, so we, we do have that. Um, Michelle, did I see your hand up? No. <coughs> You know, it's pretty clear in the letter um, at this point in time there is um, there is a public desire to understand how we're going to move forward when it comes to health care I think in any conversation I have with Islanders today that's top of mind and um, there was some concern that had come out of the recent premier's meeting so I think you know just uh, having them come in and actually walk through what the plan is in order to um, start seeing improvement and to give assurances that, you know, there is a plan, first and foremost, because we haven't really seen a fully detailed um, plan come out from this government on what, you know, other than, you know, those long-term visions of what the the uh, collaborative um, collaborative clinics would look like and, you know, talk of, of uh, the university doing medical school. There isn't actually on the ground today how our islanders going to start seeing that benchmark move forward and that requires a very solid plan and how they're going to track that moving forward to make sure that they, they're staying on that plan. So I think it was pretty clear in the letter what we're looking at and, and um, if anything, like I think islanders are seeing more um, degradation in services than seeing an improvement so okay. perfect so um, the only thing I want to touch Rob did touch on that he did submit some information uh, I think it was talked about maybe how would we like to proceed with that is that important information to to get in the letter or is this uh, amendable or can we put it in, in somewhere else because um, we did get that correspondence Rob what do you mean in the letter? What, what, the, 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 the Green Party submitted the letter to the committee. Yeah. The committee. What do you mean? Where's the? We're trying to morph those two to write a letter to somebody else, or? Well, no. I just wanted to make sure that that your your voice as a committee member was heard. You you put information in outside of the the letter. I don't know if if you want that included in the correspondence uh, to the premier and the minister. So okay, so we're we're going to write a letter, a morph a letter to this to the premier and the minister. You're saying? Yeah, I, I'm just a question of the committee. Ah, uh, okay. Well, 
I guess I guess the way I look at it, my my letter was a response to the committee. Not, this letter was that too, it, it, although it got public. A little different. I don't necessarily agree with that, but having said that, uh, you know, I, I responded to the committee, saying, basically stating that we need some clarity, no different than what this letter states. So, mm -hmm. but, but I have other reasons, I guess, and mine was a bit more based on the, the minister's comments that uh, in a CBC interview that uh, somewhat seemed to contradict. So, in my opinion, as a committee, we should be deciding. Do we feel there's validity in this, <laughs> and do we want to? What's our course of action as we take move forward? Uh, in, in my opinion, uh, the committee may correspond to draft up a letter that kind of morphs what we're trying to say to the premier or the or the minister. I, I would also add that the things like the College of Physicians should be playing a role here too. We should probably look at. Uh, bringing them in to give some clarity, because I find, as a former Minister of Health, the statements that and the plans that seem to be thrown out there make no sense, and they contradict what the College of Physicians and whose ability to add in, like I think the Minister said, we're going to add in all these nurse practitioners. Well, where are you going to get them? And, and uh, can you do that? Because once again, usually that's a negotiated process with the medical society, and, and what their scopes of practice are going to be. So. I just find that there's nothing. Nothing's making any sense to what I used to know, and uh, so I'd like to get some sense of clarity as what has changed in that regard. I mean, obviously there's different uh, presidents or chairs of the College of Physicians uh, than when I was there, and there, there's different people in different seats. But I would assume that a lot of these things still have certain protocols uh, based on what their a role in a licensing organization and how they uh, either grant or uh, remove licenses. That's stuff that uh, uh, makes sense to me. I, I certainly find when the minister makes a statement that the so-called medical homes are not having the desired effect, I think was the quote, well, what happened there? They were supposed to be the, the panacea of solutions to health care, and, and uh, we haven't seen anything. Mm -hmm. I, I also see Dr. Gardham seems to be making statements, it's only going to get worse before it gets better. Well, I'm trying to figure out where's the bottom here? Where, where, where is it the wor at the worst at? So I think there's a lot of people that I'd like to see some clarity on in, in bringing this forward. And my email to uh, the committee was to sort of add to that uh, weight of the letter that the Greens made public, as well as sent to our committee. and. Uh, um, so, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm looking for that kind of challenge. Now, whether the, these people actually will come forward and, and respond to our committee, I mean, I, I just look at it, it's our responsibility to figure out whether they should come here, and if they do, that's their decision whether they come or they don't come, and they have to deal with the uh, fallout one way or the other, whether it's appropriate to come or not to come in their, their from their perspective. So that's just my weight in this. So I see where we're kind of going with this. I'm just kind of a little confused on when you say my email, read, where does that go? I mean, it, it was simply an email to our committee in response and support of what the Greens put forward. To. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's that's what the and thanks for, for that, Rob. So, uh, Michelle, would you like to comment? And I would agree when I read um, when I read Robbie's email up around all of those individual items, those, you know, I would interpret that those would actually be inside the plan, like those, like what the medical society's role in this is and, the, and that kind of thing. And uh, so that's, I mean, we're asking what is the purpose, uh, the purpose of the meeting is a detailed briefing to say who all are they identifying as the stakeholders um, of creating a plan for health care here in Prince Edward Island. I would assume that they would be part of, of that detailed plan. Um, if they're not, after we receive the briefing from, from the Premier and the Minister, then those would certainly, that would certainly raise flags for me. And uh, then, you know, bringing back to the, the committee what the next steps after we hear what that de detailed plan is, not assuming that, there, that those are already pieces of it, so that uh, we would address that once, once we hear what the, what the Premier and the Minister have to say. Okay, perfect. Uh, Sydney? Thank you, um, uh, I don't think that's at all what you put in your letter, Michelle. Like, I think the Robbie's letter was identified some issues and stuff. You didn't talk about stakeholders or bring up groups. This is a very political letter in the summertime. Like, there's a whole bunch of things that are just purely, you know, political. 
the, the classic, you know, like we don't refer to uh, the progressive conservatives, we refer to just conservative premiers. Um, the, the, uh, you, well, there you go. Um, this is, uh, you, you talk about the, where is it here? Uh, coming out of the meeting with Ontario Premier Doug Ford, um, talk about the privatization, all that kind of stuff. Neither Premier or the Minister of Health has ever spoken about that. In fact, the Minister of Health has specifically come out against privatization. I mean, like, uh, you know, not in the way that you and I would push for privatization, like, you know, using uh, public dollars to pay for private services, which you and I both have pushed for. Um, where is it here? Especially if Premier King and Minister Hudson intend to weaken and dismantle our public health care institutions and increase privatization. That's purely a political statement. There's not a, a chance in the world that the Premier or Ernie would ever push for that or intend to weaken and dismantle our public health care institutions. Like that's incredibly political statement to make. That and it's signed by you and Carla and Peter. Um, I do think that this committee should bring in the, the stakeholders. I mean, we should be bringing in uh, also uh, Health BEI as well. They're in charge of a number of the things that you've listed in this letter. So, uh, you know, I like, Robbie, how you pointed out some specific things. I don't necessarily agree with you that, <laughs> that Ernie's saying that medical homes aren't the answer, but, you know, you took it that way. And I, okay, but, um, yeah, I'm very much in favor of, of in, inviting them in. I, I mean, this is, like, listen, we did the same thing in opposition. I get it. You know, let's call in the Premier for an emergency meeting, all this kind of stuff. But, um, you know, there's the context of it. We've got serious problems that I want to help get to the bottom of too. I see a lot of big pieces that are out there, but I want to do what's the coherent plan between the Department of Health and Health BEI to, to make this work. So I'm in, you know, in a favor of bringing them in. I'm, I'm warning if, if, you know, the, the uh, I know we've had the board, we've had Dr. Gurney in too, but that's obviously a big piece of this puzzle is Health BEI as well. So how we fit the Ministry of Health and them in uh, to see we know some of the longer plans, so what's going to happen in the next year uh, to, to alleviate some of these problems. Uh, I'm in favor of it, for sure. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so um, thanks a lot. Anybody else want to speak before we... No. Um, so we will... I'll, I guess I'll maybe I'll, uh, I'll ask the clerk, like, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about... Do, do we have to vote, or I think we're... Yeah, well, uh, voting on the 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 letters asking for the well, there was some there was some in interesting information in here talking about health PEI the board right now. I'm just trying to figure out how we get this how we get this sorted out. Is this a letter just to the premier and and Ernie, or are we talking about health PEI? I'm I'm hearing some some different things, and I think this is a good place to have that discussion. So I'm just trying to get it get it right before we move forward. Uh, Rob. I we look at see if we could get in. I'd like to hear the College of Physicians. I mean, I think they're, you know, they play a role. Uh, they are somewhat like the government. You know, works with College of Physicians, but it doesn't control them. It's a self-regulated profession. And uh, when we get into things like scopes of practice, that you know, the College of Physicians or licensing, uh, we keep hearing all these situations about you know granting licenses to foreign trained doctors, uh, things of that nature. I'd like to kind of get a sense of what's the updated version of what's the College of Physicians' opinion and view around that. So that's one one organization I'd like to say. I do I do think the minister should also be another person we ask to come in too on this because once again there seems to be some statements that that, uh, you know, like say, I wouldn't necessarily say that the medical homes weren't working, but I think the, the minister made the statement not having the desired effect, I think, was the, the impact. So I just want to <laughs> slightly clarify that. Uh, so that tells me, so what, what were the, you know, what were the expectations and what's happening and how do we bridge that gap? So, uh, so those, those would be two. And I, I would probably say even, even uh, representatives of the medical society uh, we, we haven't had them in that I'm aware of, uh, so uh, so those would be three, and I think it's just simply a request for them to come and see if they will, will meet. So those are three for me. I mean, there may be others that would want to add to that or detract from that if they think it's redundant or something that would be a waste of time. Uh, so that's where I'm kind of 
Perfect. Come from. And I'm looking for that clarity based on my correspondence with the committee, based on some statements that were made or indications that things were going one way or the other, and that was contrary to what my, my opinion was, so I'm just trying to get that clarification. Sure. Thanks, Rob. Michelle? Thanks, Chair. And so the purpose, and I, I state it right here, the purpose of the meeting would be to receive a detailed briefing from Premier King and Minister of Health of, of, of Health and Wellness, Ernie Hudson, regarding their plan for health care in this province. It's not just about doctors, right? Involving in like asking just the college to come in or just MSPEI to come in, then you're ignoring all of the other lab workers in the province, the anybody who works in nursing, all of that kind of stuff. It's all a big plan. But not only that, but you're also, we also have private long-term care homes. We also have um, other allied <coughs> health professionals that have scope of practice that Health PEI doesn't oversee. So the reason why we're asking for leadership to come in first is because I would assume that leadership has developed a plan in order to go forward. I think that the first step for this committee would be to see what is the plan that they have come up with and instead of us deciding what an alternate plan should be before we've even heard what the plan is in the first place. If we see then holes in the plan that has not been thoroughly addressed or, or, um, or discovered by the leadership of the province when it comes to health care, which is the Minister of Health, it is the Premier, then I would suggest yes, as a committee, we continue going down that path to investigate those other pieces. But as a whole, the health plan of Prince Edward Island is, leg is in legislation, and it starts with leadership of the province, and that is who oversees that legislation, and that's the Minister of Health and Wellness. So I think until we have a plan, we see the plan of what they have to put forward to Islanders, and to do that publicly, not just in quick press releases and that kind of thing, but to actually delve through the end-to-end -end plan for health care for Islanders, then we decide where we need to dig in. But if they've already met with MSPEI, which is what the Premier alluded to in that meeting, that he's already had the meeting with other stakeholders, let's hear what they came up with from that meeting. And then if we feel like we have to do an additional plan because that wasn't good enough, then I think as a committee we decide. And that's my thoughts, but I think the starting point is to hear what the next, what the next year, five year, 10 year plan out of this current government is for health care. Thanks, Michelle. Uh, Carla? Thank you, Chair. And, and I might kind of echo what I'm hearing over here, but I mean, the Premier and the Minister of Health are the ultimate, they're the ones driving the ship. They're the ones who are supposed to have this vision and this plan. And so, you know, if they have a plan, Great. I, I don't know why they're not shouting it from the rooftops. If they've done consultation and they've done these things, they obviously have a plan. Um, and then, of course, a couple of things that were mentioned by the Minister of Health in terms of scope of practice and licensing for international healthcare professionals, those are things that are legislated. These are issues with the leadership, like in terms of leadership and in terms of the things that need to be legislated. And so, yeah, this might lead us down a path of meeting with all kinds of stakeholders, which would be, you know, something that obviously is something that might come out of this. But I think that we absolutely need to start start with the leaders and, and they are the ones who are leading healthcare in the province. So we need to hear what they're thinking and what their plan is. Yeah. Sydney? Yeah, uh, I agree. And, you know, instead of making political statements like that they're trying to weaken and dismantle our public health care system, I want to hear, see things like, you know, uh, what when the premiers got together, are they talking about the interprovincial barriers that we face? Like when a doctor comes from Ontario and wants to spend two weeks in PEI for the summer and pick up ships up west, and they can't because of licensing issues. Exactly. Like, that's what I want to hear. Like, what, are they talking about that? Not political statements, but that we're trying to privatize the system and, and you know, throwing in Doug Ford's name to try and score points. That's the stuff that I want to get to. So, yeah, absolutely. I think we're getting somewhere as a committee. So, um, so I, I'm just, I, I'm just, this, this letter is directed at Premier King, Minister Hudson. There's, there's a lot of talk about other people. Would the committee like to just focus on, on the leadership? Is that what can we do? That can we can we get to that area, 
and then and then see about so um, I guess what we'll do is we'll send a letter off uh, to the Premier and to Minister Hudson to, to see them coming in first not health PEI nobody else just just uh, just our our, le our political leaders in that level and then try to work from there um, saying that um, timing is our, our schedule is is pretty uh, pretty full so that might mean a flexibility amongst the members uh, uh, flexibility amongst dates and that's where we're kind of I'm going to kind of bring the clerk in yes. on that so our Wednesday mornings are full until October um, so if we wanted to try and get them in quite early we have Wednesday afternoons and potentially Friday mornings as an open slot if the committee would be open to that okay. yeah would that, would that be okay for uh, Sydney? Friday mornings committee? No, it's an open slot for committees, yeah. Okay. Um, and then, uh, Sydney? So, you know, the uh, three members of opposed again, Michelle, Carla, and Peter that brought this in have called it an emergency. If both can't come at the same time, like, what's our plan here? If it's, are we, just, you know, if yeah. I'm trying to schedule caucus meetings and I can't get the, you know, get everybody together kind of thing. So, um, I'm curious to know who do you want there and it really if you know we, if we're desperately trying to get someone in the next few weeks and we can't get both there are we willing to accept one or are we willing to accept two like uh, Michelle Hi, chair I'd prefer to send the letter out and have, address it when the response comes back if that's possible perfect and I'd like to schedule it uh, as soon as possible because um, I do recognize that we're going to get into probably busy fall session, like fall and then leading into the, but I think that this is one of the most important things that's top of mind of Islanders and I would like to see it happen as soon as possible. Okay. Yeah. Rob? I, still, I, I think when we're trying to schedule stuff, I mean, everybody's busy schedules and it's always a difficult challenge. I think we still should be going up the process of asking the College of Physicians to come in and speak as well. I mean, I, I'm totally with you in saying that the Minister of Health should answer to the committee. I'm not opposing that at all. I just know from in the past, getting a Minister of Health and Premier all on the same day in a short notice and all those things are going to be challenged. So to me, you go after that. But I think at the same time, you also need to be trying to find some other scheduling. You know, let's hope once you get something from the Minister of Health and, uh, you know, I think the College of Physicians. And I, I'm talking about more of the clarity. And once again, it would also clean, you know, clarifies things that the minister, I think Michelle's comments that, you know, it's, it, we do need the, what's the vision and what's the plan here, but if, if you don't have the, the background uh, as well as saying, so if the minister is saying that we're going to add all these more nurse practitioners in, what's the scope of practice he's going to allow them to do and how does that uh, impact on the College of Physicians and uh, uh, this comment about licensing, it, it's an exact, I, I went through that as a minister, I mean every province has its own college and I'm not opposed to that. But you would love to see them be more uh, standardized in their, what's approved for a license in one province that it would be comparable to another, and uh, at least within reason. And uh, that's, the, that's the part that I always found frustrating, and I think the college needs to a answer to that a little bit, and what's the rationale be why, why things are slow to get an approval for a license and, uh, from one province to the next. So I, I do think that they are... A group that I want to hear from, you know, yeah. in, in the scheme of things. But I'm one person, so no. Okay, perfect. So that that maybe on the table. We'll go to Zach. I wanted to just echo what Robin said as well. Um, I'm 100 percent in favor of the medical society or the College of Physicians to present. But I always go back to the point of, you know, there is only so much time before we sit in the legislature. Uh, as our clerk has mentioned, you know, we have a pretty full schedule. I was actually just kind of looking. We've got like Wednesday morning, Wednesday afternoons already booked. Um, so I would be in favor of that. And again, I'm the same as I think every single member, you know, been knocking on a few doors this summer and you hear healthcare as a, you know, something that definitely comes up. And I would like to know these answers as well. Um, keeping in mind, you know, what Sydney had mentioned about, you know, the the stars will have to align, I think, to have every single person. Yeah, we're going to be available on Wednesday, October 3rd or whatever. But I would say send out the letters, and I would also second to maybe send a letter out to the College of Physicians. All they're going to do is they're going to say, no, we can't make it, or we won't be available during that time. Thank you, Chair. So I just want to talk about 
can, can we get uh, – Rob suggested we get the college to come in uh, positions. Is that okay to send that letter? Would the, what would the committee like to do on that? Can I, Michelle? Can I ask the letter just be dealt with and that we vote on whether we're sending that correspondence out and then can we, can we treat that as a secondary request sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. and we vote on that and then we move forward? Sure, sure. It was just brought up. Okay, so we'll, we'll do that. So... Um, the, the letter is, and, and just before we do, the, the, um, the, there's correspond, there are all correspondence with Conservative Premiers prior to the August 22nd, 22, in relation to the meetings. Uh, that, that's in the letter, so um, I just want to make sure that the committee knows. We also request that the Premier provide the committee with the following documents before the meeting is held. So um, that, that's, that's in there. Uh, Rob? We're this letter? Well, I mean, I, see, this is where I'm getting baffled on the letters. I, I think we, we are drafting our own letter as a committee to request the premier and the and the minister of health to come in and explain their vision and views mm -hmm. for health care, and to deal with some of the contradictory statements that they might have made. And we're just looking for some clarity in that. I think another letter <laughs> needs to be drafted from this committee to the College of Physicians to ask them a similar situation. And we'd like to get some clarity to understand, as a committee, issues around licensing, uh, you know, what are some of the impediments or what are some of the things that they see when it comes to co scope of practice uh, from a licensing perspective and a liability perspective. There's a lot of factors that come into that. The Medical Society, which I want to emphasize, is a separate group. It, it, you know, it, it represents the physicians and the medical society itself, but it, it, uh, the College of Physicians is a self-regulatory organization that oversees the, the people of the, of the members of the medical society. So, so there's some, but maybe, you know what, there's a, another letter goes out to the medical yeah. society. I don't know where it ends and how many letters you want to send out, but, but I, I, at least for me, I looked at those, the, 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 to me, the, the minister and the premier maybe, but minister for certain and the other is the college of physicians so so i think they're all letters that we draft specifically not copy this and send it to them okay Th so that's that's my version sure we'll be drafting our own letters okay, <laughs> with that? okay. much clearer so we'll draft our own letter um <laughs> and then I, I i just we didn't deal with the that that section of of the letter that came in so uh sydney just make sure morale spell right from the letter. oh did, uh, did we saw, did only one error in morale. Okay. So, um, de dealing with that, does the committee want to see those those documents in our new letter? Um, yeah. So, because we just didn't talk about that, is that okay that we include that in the in the in the letter? to pertain so like I say I, I think there's a yeah, yeah, there, there's a valid point of you know the the comment of you know that the premier did meet with uh, premier Ford and premier Ford has made statements so you're correct totally correct that the premier has never stated that he was there at the meeting hearing some of the alternatives and versions and that there's nothing I don't have a, necessarily a problem with that but Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. Or private, private, or private public, yeah. right? Yeah, so, yeah. like, it would be a good conversation to clear there rather than making. Like, that, that's what I said. When I, you make a political statement about we're bringing privatization to PI and, and, you know, and they're going to weaken, dismantle our system. Like, that's not true, right? Now, what is your intention of using private services, right? Are we actually going to pay pharmacists, uh, uh, not even expand the ghost couple of but, you know, pay them for what they actually can do now? I think it's private service, publicly funded, but private service, right? Um, and there's all kinds of, 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 you know, examples like that. Our own physicians that have their own, you know, private service here kind of thing, right? So, I mean, so that is a good... So, so to good me, time. it's more like we're, we're asking the Premier based on, you know, he, he attended a meeting where discussions were had around that, but he, he never said anything. But what, what's his take on that? What's his update to us as Islanders and as a legislature on that meeting? Maybe he's going to dismiss all of it. None of it was, you know, was a waste of time. Or maybe there's a few things that were uh, important there. So I don't have a problem with referring to the, the meeting <laughs> that he attended to give us an update and that 
is something I would look in the letter. I just wouldn't say verbatim the letter is what you <laughs> you send, you know. So uh, and and certainly the <laughs> well, yeah, no. So I, so I look back at you know uh, we do have factors around emergency uh, departments, uh, especially in the rural closures, uh, more than way more than what has been in the past. Uh, the patient registry per capita is actually I think about the worst in the country. <laughs> Like, it's bad. Uh, loss of family doctors, that seems to be continuing. I, you know, I think that's all, those are all points. I'm sort of making the same thing that I was saying in my correspondence to the committee. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I don't mind some of those comments being added into the equation of what we're looking for, but I just would want us to have our own letter that highlights the things that we as a committee feel is a priority. And, and the, some of the points in this letter are valid, you know, mm -hmm. they're, they're worth referencing, but I, I just want to clarify those things. Mm -hmm. You guys were talking about Forces Sydney? Yeah. I just want to. No, that's, that's good. I just want well, to. Well, that's not good. You're supposed to go through the chair. <laughs> um, uh, so can we ask the, send the, the clerk to, to draft us a, a, a letter? Mm -hmm. um, maybe tone down the, the, the political, but be firm in, in the asks and, and what we're looking for and the information and, and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Circulate that to the committee and then we can approve mm -hmm. it and. Yeah. Send it out if we've got consensus. It sounds like we do. Yeah, perfect. Great. Okay, so that's that's uh, so we'll we'll and then obviously the the clerk will will send us the letter before uh, it goes out and then we'll we'll take maybe feedback. I think this is an important one, so um, there'll be another chance for for members to maybe provide some feedback on the letter. Um, thanks a lot for the. Uh, Chair, yes, Michelle. Schedule another meeting of all of us together. Can, are we going to do that through email and provide feedback through email? Is that possible? Because I think the sooner the letter goes out, the better. Because I believe that this is number should be a top priority mm -hmm. to get yeah. it out as quickly as possible, so we can get it scheduled as soon as possible. Yeah, Rob. So, now, what about a second letter to the College of Physicians? We, Zach and I seem to have some sense of uh, like-mindedness on that. Yeah. Uh, but I think in that letter we don't refer <laughs> anything about that meeting or things. It's just about trying to get to me uh, a better understanding on the, the licensing process and how the College of Physicians determines licensing and uh, uh, dealing with liability and what are some of the realities of uh, from their perspective when it comes to uh, having more physicians practice in Prince Edward Island and how nurse practitioners uh, and scope of practice fall into that play. Like, mm -hmm. like I say, there would be potential liability issues that one would have to discuss. And like I say, the, the, the minister made the statement at Encompass that more nurse practitioners was something that he wanted to see in the province and, uh, and uh, the scope of practice of nurse practitioners. So we'll have to assume that the scope of practice is, is going to focus more on the physicians and how does that impact them. So that's where I think another letter just, just asking for explanations and for uh, some clarity on some of those types of issues on licensing and sco uh, scope of practice and uh, uh, liability and things of that nature. Great. So. But same thing, and I, I would be comfortable with, you know, a, the clerk draft, off, draft up a letter, send it to everybody, we can kind of chew it apart in emails and stuff like that. But I, I think that's the context of what I'm looking for, and ultimately if, if they and their representatives can come and uh, answer any questions and provide more clarity, then that, that's what I'm looking for. I'm just, I, I realize they'll be busy too, and timing and scheduling is always the challenge, but mm -hmm. If you don't start, we'll, we'll never get to where we need to be. So, Perfect. So, uh, Michelle? Do Great. That. Thanks, Chair. So, setting aside the first letter and agreeing that we've already agreed that we're going to, uh, moving on to the next, um, inviting the co College of Surgeons and Physicians, sure. But what about the other colleges who manage the regulatory on their own scope of practices? So, you have the College of Nursing. No. Inviting the College of Surgeons and Physicians isn't going to speak on behalf of the nurse practitioners as, you, as you've referenced. So we are getting ourselves then into a broader discussion with more than just one, one stakeholder, which again is why, you know, understand what government has done to date as a full plan, um, having the minister and the premier come in to speak on that first and who they've engaged and who they've brought into that. I think that that is valuable knowledge for us to have, but then 
if we're going to look at other stakeholders that we bring in and what other challenges that there are out there, then we need to be broader than just speaking of doctors at this point in time because there's the College of um, Pharmacy, there's the College of Nursing, there's, you know, there's, there's, you know, a lot of healthcare providers that can provide a lot more services to Islanders in this province that aren't able to work within their full educated scope of practice. Rob? Well, I would agree. I'm not, I'm not you know, we, let, let's try to take it in chunks there at the start. And I, I would say you start maybe at the College of Physicians and Surgeons and you work your way down. But, but uh, I'm basing mine on, the, once again, the statement that the minister had on a Compass interview was that we're going to add, you know, more nurse practitioners uh, and we'll look at their scope of practice. So that <laughs> automatically is going to impact the, the one is the College of Physicians. That's, I'm assuming that they're not going to work the other way down towards uh, like cutting into uh, nurses. And I believe the College of Nurses probably deals with nurse practitioners. I can't st could stand corrected on that. But, but I think that's where I, so I would say we should start with the College of Physicians. Let's get that sense and then and then if once again if we feel we need to go more like you're right there's all every there's a self-regulated professions many of our healthcare uh industry uh workers and uh, but I, I wouldn't prevent saying let's get them and and but if we don't uh we've got to get everybody before we get them you know I, I i'd say start there and work our way down and see how it goes based on scheduling and timing and information and I'm looking at, like I said, I'm coming back to if there's a contradictory statement that somebody's making comparable to what I understood, that's where I'm looking for the clarity. And I think the College of Physicians would be the start based on the minister's comments again. I would also argue, um, is there lots of nurse practitioners out there that you could get if you want to add more nurse practitioners? I know in my time as a minister, I did add a sizable number of nurse practitioners, but that had to be negotiated with the medical society and once again dealing with the scope of practice that they could administer and deliver. Mm -hmm. So, and that usually starts with whose turf are they cutting into? <laughs> so if they're going to do certain duties that the physicians and doctors are doing, you got to figure out there's some uh, symmetry in what they both do, right? And if, and if we say the nurse practitioners are going to give up some territory, then you know, that's where we deal with the nurses. And if it's a uh, Gets, gets down to other medical lab professionals or whatever, They're, we have to deal with each one of them as they take certain territory and give up others. Great. Okay. Appreciate that. Um, so I guess it's we're, we're talking about a contradictory statement, bringing them in as a starting point. That's what we're kind of looking at now. now everybody, it, this is a such a problem in Prince Edward Island, understandable. Um, I just want to look at can we what does the committee can we can we vote i guess we, there's no motion on the floor so can we talk about can that letter go out to the college and bring them in is is that's what i'm looking at do i have Let's consensus or made it here a number of times to uh, make a request for representatives of the college of physicians to come in to uh, brief this committee on the licensing practices and decisions that they make uh, the you know how they look at things like scope of practice and some of the statements of uh, the uh, minister made in regards to that I, I don't, you can word it cer some certain component of that and uh, uh, you try to schedule it i i agree i'd really like to have the minister first but I mean, you know, if we at least make the request and then we try to schedule something, you know, with the, these two things in play and where we go from there is, I guess, anybody's guess uh, on how many more groups and associations we decide to bring in. But it is a, certainly a, a poignant issue to try to correct uh, and f get some plan on how we can, as a legislative committee, provide some help in improving health care in Prince Edward Island. Perfect. Thanks, Rob. There's a motion on the floor. Um, does anybody want to speak to that motion, which we have spoken to a little bit, but um, does anybody else want to speak before we vote on it? Uh, Michelle? I would like to see the Premier and the Minister here first, because then that will formulate some of the questions that I would have for the college when we bring it in, bring them in. So uh, if we could amend it to say that we bring them in after the minister and the premier that would be my preference and then if that's the case i'm i'm fine with it but i'd like to have 
the provincial plan in front of us first so that we can discuss through that and then um, what if we need to dig into certain aspects of that then then that will give us some direction as to where we need to go Carol and and I agree with that send it out to the the premier and the minister first and if we're sending a letter out to the College of Physicians which I'm certainly not opposed to we have to be ready as a committee to send it out to other colleges yeah that's not an you're not making an amendment no but I'm just I'm yeah. just saying we can't just we can't just invite in the College of Physicians and nobody else yeah you know because that's one while it's a big piece of the puzzle it's not the only piece of the puzzle perfect so anybody else will speak to that so there's a did you you amended that motion well Michelle had said she, she was talking about adding uh, at first I, I don't oppose that I, I guess I just try to say as a committee Politicians are elusive groups. Sometimes it's hard to get <laughs> get them to come. I just want the yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. I'm just I'm saying. Not so elusive. I'm pretty clear. How, on the fact that I want them first. Well, they are elusive. I guess you know they're, that's up to them to schedule it in, and you hope they have it as a priority. But how long do we wait to get the next one? And that's all. I, I, I don't have a problem with the amendment, and would support that. But okay, that so means we, we hold back our committee for more work, you know, time before we get other things done. Sydney? I'd be okay with them. And I think they would act, to your point, you'd rather hear from them first. So you, that helps with your questions to the college. I'd rather have answers from them before I question the minister, quite frankly. I'd want the information. So, but okay. I'm just one. And, and my other question is so is, is the meeting with the College of Physicians and Surgeons also an emergency meeting? Like, is that one that we're also scheduling outside of our regular Wednesday mornings? I don't want to. Uh, I'll, uh, Emergency meetings are fun. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't want to speak for the committee, for my, but for my end of the call, it's a request. So I would look at this emergency. emergency, but I would hope that they would see the the sort of sense of urgency <laughs> of trying to clarify some of these issues and statements, and once again provide a committee. And from in my perspective. As a committee who has used to be a former Minister of Health, I kind of thought I understood how these things sort of work, and that's where the minister has made statements that I don't, I'm thinking, I don't know if you can do that. <laughs> and uh, I understand, so maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Things have changed. Uh, you know, it's been a while since I've been Minister of Health, so I'm not saying that there ha they haven't been. So um, I would uh, just look for that sense of clarity. So that's why I do not feel it, it's an emergency request, but I would say, I would like to know that moving forward. <laughs> Great. So I don't think we can, with the committee schedule, I, we could look at putting it in on, on a regular Wednesday, but they are, they're pretty full. Um, so we'd have to determine with the college at that time if, and the committee if we could do it on a Friday or, or so, some other time. So I, 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 that's, that's all I can say is at this time. So what I want to do is I want to vote on the amendment first, which is to say that the College of Physicians um, can only come in after the Premier and the Minister comes in. So was that, is, that, is that right? That would be the amendment. Vote on the amendment, then we'll vote on the motion, then we'll carry on. So um, can all those in favor of um, how would I word this? So that's perfectly. In favor of her, her amendment to my motion. The, the, yeah, all those in favor of prioritizing um, the, the Premier first or the amendment uh, say aye. Aye. All those uh, against say nay. Nay. Okay, that, that, mo that amendment does not pass. Um, so we'll vote on the original motion right now. Um, so all those in favor of the original motion from the College of Physicians in, say aye. 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 All those against say nay. Okay, then that motion passes. Okay, perfect. So that letter will be sent off. Um, thanks for that, uh, that time. I think we're getting somewhere. We have to, we're going to go back to that. Just a Great. Sorry. <laughs> so I just want to go back to... Um, it's because the, 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 the clerk needs uh, clarification. Um, we also request that the Premier provides the committee with the following documents before the meeting. All correspondence with the Conservative Premiers prior to August 22nd in relation to these meetings. 
all documents and briefing notes shared or taken during the meetings with the conservative premiers. Um, that, that's a request that, that the, the clerk's asking me to see about, do we put that in the letter from this committee to the premier and to the minister of health? Can I just, is it, does it, do we have consensus or do you want to, do you want to vote on that? All those, in, oh, well, I could say, uh, Rob? I, like I say, I, I sort of see, it. I, I don't, I don't see what this does. It, it basically says to our committee, which I think gives priority to what we've just decided and we've asked to, so I don't want to be contentious of this, but I just don't see what the perspective would be of this going to the premier. I mean, we, we've, we've made the request to ask the premier and the, the minister to come in. We wrote our own letter <laughs> to ask that. I mean, if he, if we want to put something to reference that, if he, if the premier wants to reference that letter, then I'll by all means put that in our letter. But I, don't, I just don't see the value in it. But Michelle, am I um, correct in saying that it's about the production of documents? So it's writing our own letter from this, but including that they provide the that they do the production of documents around that meeting that ha that occurred. Is that, is that a, that's a statement or question or, uh, yes, that's what. That's clarifying what yeah. that question was that was asked to the committee, not whether we write our own letter. We've already established, but it's what content goes into the letter and as part of the initial letter was that there was a production of documentation and that we include that as part of the letter that we draft oh. as committee. Not sending the original oh. letter, but actually continuing with some of the content that was in it. And I would say that, that we continue with that content. Perfect. Rob? I stand corrected. So it's just in our letter, <laughs> referencing that we would like some uh, updates on the documents that were presented at that meeting or came from that meeting or the, the memorandum that came from that meeting, or, uh, then I say include that in our own letter. I have, I have no problem with that. Perfect. Uh, Zach? We're not, just, like, Jerry, we're not just including any correspondence. Like, do you know what I mean? Getting rid of the conservative premier's meeting and just put any correspondence either leading up to or following the meeting. Just a suggestion. Commit, committee? Include the dates so they know which meeting we're talking about. And to go. Okay. <laughs> like, there we go. Great. It's a specific meeting and who is attending, and that is, the I date. think, yeah. an important aspect of that meeting. Okay. Uh, sorry, we're, we're question. getting. That's production you, of documents. I don't know. Right? That I, would be a. Excuse me? Excuse me? Hold on. We're getting lost in the booth. We just got to. They're just having trouble. So, Sydney? Chair? Yeah. Oh. Oh, I thought you were speaking. Oh. Uh, so we have conservative premiers, but if you want to know what Newfoundland was doing as well, we're kind of excluding them, aren't we? Michelle? So, the request in the letter is to provide all correspondence prior to the meeting about the meeting and whether all premiers were invited or if just specific premiers, that's what that, that's what that production of documentation would be. And anyway, I think it's pretty clear what I'm asking for, um, Chair, yeah. is production of documents and briefing notes shared during and prior to that, to that meeting that was held. And we all know who attended it, so. If somebody couldn't attend it, we'd find that out through the production of documents, which would be interesting information for sure. Sydney, any? Can't semantics of it, but, but no, you won't find it out. You won't find it out because you're only asking for the premiers that were there. But anyway, it, it's fine. Carla? we would find it, that would be, because every Premier who was there would have um, correspondence. So if if we're looking for who was invited to the meeting, that would absolutely be in there. Okay. Right? I disagree, but that's fair. Sydney? We're in semantics here, so. Okay, I'm just trying to make help out the booth. Um, <laughs> so 
We will include that um, uh, in the letter. Just take out. Did, did we? This all started with taking out the word conservative. Are, are we taking that out? Or are we? Rob, keep referring to this letter for everything. Where, like I say, to me, this letter came to the committee. If, and there's nothing wrong with the letter. We have drafted our own letter to now which we're including uh, the request for documents. Uh, you know, I, I, you leave it at that. I mean, it, <laughs> yeah. Well, this is so, so you know, say, I'm not opposed to this letter, but it, 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 it's just it's there for reference. And we don't copy it and paste it into our letter. It, sure. We've drafted our own letter as a committee, and I think we've done a pretty good job of that. So I, I just say, yeah. Chair, we could try not to refer to this letter as the copy that we're sending. It's no. just uh, excerpts from this letter exactly. is what we're looking for and are pertinent to the I'm, story. I'm trying to get as much information for the clerk as, as we can yeah. so that when the we see the drafted letter, there's not a whole lot of edits and yeah. we can do that speedily. And, and Pre appreciate it, so, Chair. Yeah, excellent. So everything is set. Clerk, do you have any more clarifications, questions? I hope not. No, I don't. Good. <laughs> excellent. <laughs> Um, so what I would like to do now, just check with the clerk, um, uh, just, just move on to new business. Any, any new business at this time? Um, I'm going to check with the clerk too. Can I, is it possible that I can, we're going into camera next to talk about the, the uh, human right to appointment. Can I adjourn the meeting now? Can I adjourn the public meeting and then move into camera? Or? Uh, we'd need a motion to move in camera. Okay. First. Okay. So. Can I get uh, a motion to move in camera to talk about the next part of our meeting? Uh, Zach, and then, uh, so uh, can I get a mo do I adjourn this meeting? Mm -hmm. Okay, so can I get a motion to adjourn this meeting? Uh, Rob Henderson, so this meeting is adjourned, but we're going into in camera. Okay, thank you. <laughs>